Hello and welcome to another video here on One Team Inertia. Today we're going to be taking a look at the players that we brought in during the summer transfer window and how they're getting on within the squads and what kind of impact they've had so that we can sort of discuss overall how successful the transfer season has been uh, for this summer. So starting off uh, with Brandon Honstrup, obviously the left back coming in from Portsmouth on a free transfer. Obviously all of our uh, transfers were free, I don't think we paid money for a player in a couple of years. Uh, Brandon Honstrup, he's done okay so far. He's not really had the chance that he would have wanted. Obviously came here with very high pedigree coming from Portsmouth. The, the fans there were very uh, sad to lose him, I think was the, the way they would have said. You know, I think uh, they were quite upset about that, but he hasn't really had a chance to shine in his natural position as of, yeah, he's played left mid. He played, uh, you know, a sort of holding centre midfielder against Infermline in the cup the other night. So he hasn't really been able to show us what he's got uh, in the left back position, but I don't think he's actually been too bad when he's played uh, in the left midfield position. He's actually, you know, he's brought some pace, he's brought a bit of energy, which is something that we need, you know, later on in games coming on as a sub. So I don't think he's done too badly, but he just hasn't been able to get that opportunity yet that he would have wanted to have um, this far into the season so far. Uh, Danny Rogers obviously coming in from Aberdeen on a free transfer. Didn't start the first game, uh, obviously with Jake Eastwood. Uh, he had a bit of a howler against Hibs and then um, subsequently got injured in the same game and Danny Rogers came in. He had a bit of a shaky start, a couple of mistakes in the first couple of games, but since then completely solid and I think you know he's got the backing of all the fans now uh, and could be our first choice goalkeeper for, for quite a long time hopefully. He seems to have embedded well into the team and, and is going really well so really good to see uh, him taking his chance in the Premiership. Danny Whitehall perhaps one of the, the more disappointing signings so far. I'm sure he'll be disappointed with the lack of game time that he's had in the first team coming in from Maidenhead as a sort of third choice striker really um, in the side and you know the good form of Kabamba and then Brophy's been out injured but we've only really played the one striker for quite a bit of this season so he hasn't really had a sniff at all came with quite a bit of promise so we'll have to wait and see if, if he gets his chance I'm sure when he gets his chance he'll be able to take it um, but it's just whether he'll be able to get that and try and you know keep Kabamba and Brophy out of the team which is going to be hard to do because they're both playing really well at the minute, especially Niki Kabamba. Um, perhaps the you know the biggest capture of the window was uh, Aaron Tishbola coming in on a free transfer as well. You know, as he third spell at the club, we know exactly what he's like. The talent he's got, once a five million pound rated player, not so much now, but you know he still has that talent. And you know, in the past, in his past spells at Kelly, he's not quite lived up to the sort of expectations that we had. They just seemed to be maybe a wee bit too cocky and. Um, just thought he would come in and stroll it, but you know this season he's really got to to work. He's hard. He's working hard uh, for the team, and you know he's been one of the the outstanding players of the season, especially since we've started winning games again, and you know he's scoring goals as well. So you know he's been one of the stars of the season so far. And long may it continue, and hopefully he'll have a quite a long and successful career this time at Kelly. Up next, Mitch Pinnock came in from AFC Wimbledon, has had you know a couple of sub appearances off the bench hasn't really got going when he's had his chance you know we know he's got pace we know he's a bit tricky but I just don't think he's been able to to show it you know he's he's nowhere near unfortunately the standard or not he's not showing yet the standard that sort of Jordan Jones and um, people like that did and you know it looks unlikely that he's going to break into the team and be a starter ahead of the likes of Greg Kilty and Rory McKenzie um, so you know he's good as, as an impact sub especially late on in games if we're chasing the game uh, and want to try something different then he's always there as a good option to have but just hasn't quite had the impact I don't think they would have wanted um, as of yet Aaron McGowan again quite disappointing I'm sure for himself and for the club and just the way it's worked out obviously Ross Millen has, has been fantastic so far this season and um, you know hasn't really put a foot wrong apart from that red card against St Johnson and obviously McGowan came with, with a lot of real promise from Hamilton you know he had a fantastic two years there did well at his clubs before that, um, and came with a lot of promise. And um, unfortunately, when he when he got his chance, when when Millen was given the red card against St John, he never really took it, and he never really impressed massively. And that's why Millen's been able to to slot himself back into the team when he's been fit. Um, unfortunately, he missed the missed the game, you know, at the weekend against Livingston. But um, I assume that once he's back, he'll be straight back in there. So McGowan not being able to take his chance when he's had it, but. Definitely a capable replacement and it'll be interesting to see as the season goes on whether he'll get any more chances or not, um, for example, in the cup games. But we'll need to see um, how that goes. 
Uh, Clever Di Kimona came from Hearts quite late on in the window um, as defensive cover and he's had, you know, had come on as a sub a couple of times and uh, he played in the Livingston game just at the weekend there in place of Stuart Finlay and he was actually very solid. Um, you know, I really impressed um, myself and, you know, all the fans online as well. They were uh, giving rave reviews and he was getting a lot of Man of the Match nominations so he did really well there. Um, whether he could play every game, I'm not totally sure. I'd still rather have Stuart Finlay in there but certainly a capable backup and, and seems like a really good um, capture if he can keep that form up for the rest of the season. <clears throat> um, next up, Colin Doyle uh, coming in from Hearts on loan late in the window when uh, Jake Eastwood first got injured. He played for the first time against Dunfermline, obviously let in three goals, one of which he could do nothing about, you know, the free kick and the other two were headers, which he could maybe have done a bit better with. Um, but yeah, it looks like he's going to be pretty much third choice goalkeeper once Jake Eastwood gets fit again before January. Um, so I don't think we'll see too much more of him at all this season, but, you know, always good to have a third choice keeper with that level of experience. So um, good in that respect. Uh, talking about Jake Eastwood, he's the next one on loan from Sheffield United. Obviously, didn't do too well in his first game at Hibs. Obviously, considered that those two goals, especially the first one, um, he had a bit of a howler for when he when he came out far too keen, um, and obviously he got injured. Hasn't played since. Whether he'll get another chance to play, I'm not too sure. Because obviously, Danny Rogers is having a, a really good season so far. Um, and Eastwood might not get a chance, so we need to wait and see whether he plays in the cup games, if he's going to be back fit by then. Um, but if not, then it's probably not been the most successful loan spell um, for Jake Eastwood at all. Second last, uh, Zeno Ebsen Rossi uh, on loan from Bournemouth. Played a couple of games but, uh, just at the weekend there against Livingston, and played a, he's played a couple of other times as well in the left back position I don't think we've seen him at centre back yet and he's he played pretty well especially at the weekend against Livingston he was another um, outstanding performer he did really well and, and looks like a capable replacement at centre back and at left back if is so required if there's not enough um, you know there's not enough cover in there then it looks like he'll do um, quite well in that regard um, and finally Yusuf Malumbu you know, he's he's not had too much playing time so far. He's he's been injured for a decent chunk of the time. He's been here, but we all know the quality he has. It's just maybe unfortunate that we've got three very good central midfielders at the minute in Tishbola, Power and Dicker. Whether he'll get more of a chance as the season goes on, we'll need to see. But you know, he's gonna be so vital for, for late stages in games when we're maybe chasing the game or, or looking to play on the counter attack and, and he can come on, not do a whole lot of running because we know that the running isn't his thing, but um, he can come on and, and you know just spray past about, try and get us in behind and and do you know really provide that quality. So another really good option to have. So generally, um, over the window, you know, in, in past windows, I think Kelly have maybe been guilty of waiting till till the last couple of days, the last couple of hours, even to see what's available. And for a club of our standing, you know, one of the biggest teams in Scotland, we shouldn't really be doing that. We should be getting the the business done early. You know, we should be able to attract people early in the window. And it looks like. You know, we've actually been able to do that this season. Perhaps, you know, the, the addition of James Fowler as director of football has had a big impact on that because he's been able to, before the, the window even opens, get out there, get scouting, get people, get, get maybe talk to people um, and drop a short list of who he wants so that when the window opens, he's able to, you know, get going straight away and, and get those players in. So generally the window, I think, has been a massive success, you know, of Got some really good quality to come in. Um, Aaron Tishbola, Danny Rogers, um, Ibsen Rossi, the, the standouts there. and We've got plenty of cover for all the all the areas that we need. So for once, I think, in, a, in for the first time in quite a couple of, of windows, it's been a really successful window. And, you know, if that's the, the doing of, of James Fowler, then uh, long may it continue. Um, but yeah, it's been a, a fantastic window. And good to see that, that quite a few of these players are, are taking their chance and, uh, providing that quality for us and providing that backup when it's needed for the first team. So um, let me know down below what you think uh, in terms of you know how successful the window's been. Has it been a good window? Do you think there's maybe more we could have done? Maybe other players we could have got in? Um, and you know is, who's, who's been impressive um, for the squad since coming in? Who's maybe been a bit disappointing? Let me know uh, down below um, and um, we'll have a nice discussion on it. So uh, thank you very much for watching. And remember to tune in uh, midweek where we'll be looking at uh, the FIFA 21 ratings for Comoric players, which should be very interesting to look at and just see how everyone's doing there. So thank you very much for watching and see you next time.